Hello and welcome to Hillbilly DVD Reviews. Today we're going to be taking a look at the indie film drama, The Door in the Floor. Door in the Floor is a little independent film, came out a few years ago. Drama based on a book by John Irving. The movie stars Jeff Bridges, Kim Basinger, and that little motherfucker John Foster. The movie starts out about a family. Jeff Bridges is the dad, Kim Basinger is the mom. They have a real young child, uh, played by Elle Fanning. Elle Fanning, you probably know her now. Uh, sister of the, what's, what's that bitch's name, Dakota Fanning or whatever? Anyway, Elle Fanning's a teenager now, she was in the movie Super 8, but this movie, she's like a four-year-old girl, like she's real little, real tiny, you barely even recognize her. So anyway, they're this family living out in the Hamptons, out on the ocean and shit, got a real nice house. Jeff Bridges is a writer, as well as like an artist, he paints paintings and shit. Kim Basinger, the wife, she's just like really like, seems doped out, but she's not really on dope, she just dealing with a real emotional tragedy of loss. See what happened was, they don't go into it in the beginning of the story too much, but they kind of set up that there was a tragedy where the family lost their two teenage boys. And so to kind of compensate for it, they had another kid, this young girl played by Elle Fanning. And the whole thing's kind of strange. Can Kim Mason, she can't really cope with the loss. She's just zoning out big time. And Jeff Bridges, he's doing everything he can, but he's fucked up in his own ways. He's philandering and shit. He's a drunkard. You know, he does this little game where he, uh, cons all these women into posing nude for him and shit and, and paintings and stuff. Next thing you know, he's banging them and shit. He got Mimi Rogers on the hook. Fucking, she's like, you know, a neighbor down the road. It's real fucked up what he does to Mimi Rogers. He makes her get all naked and shit and spare her legs and he paints these fucking horrible, like terrible paintings, man. Like, you can tell he don't even give a shit. Even though he really can paint, he's just doing this shit, you know, as an excuse to demean her and get in her pants and do all this weird fucked up shit to her. So, summertime rolls around. Jeff Bridges. He brings a young boy over to the island, kind of like a friend of the family to be his assistant for the summer. It's kind of fucked up because a young kid, played by John Foster, he's like 18, 19 years old in the movie. Um, he looks a lot like their sons who died. So Jeff Bridges, even a minutes later, he brought him over because, you know, he looked like their sons. Maybe it would help bring Kim Basinger out of her, like, her emotional coma and shit because she's really fucked up. So basically what happens is Jeff Bridges, he's running around doing all his little slimy shit. So the kid and Kim Basinger end up hanging out a lot because they have this weird kind of thing going back and forth. Jeff Bridges and Kim Basinger are separated. So like every other day, Jeff Bridges goes and he stays at this apartment in town. And then Kim Basinger stays there and then they switch. So basically they're never in the same house at the same time because they're, you know, they have a lot of problems going on and shit. So John Foster is staying at the main house every night. So, you know, half the time Jeff Bridges is there, half the time Kim Basinger is there. Of course, he ends up striking up a friendship with Kim Basinger. You know, she really takes to him because he looks a lot like their dead sons, of course. So they kind of have this weird relationship going on. Next thing you know, because Kim Basinger is a good-looking woman, John Foster, he's beating off from left and right, man. He's going through all her fucking panty drawers and shit. She catches him, you're like, oh, shit. See, that's the thing that's great about this fucking movie, man. It is like a somber, serious, independent film drama, but they put a lot of like fucking just crazy, uncomfortable, bizarre comedy into it. And that's what makes this movie stand out, man. Is, you know, just when things are getting heavy and dark, they throw in just a really fucking funny scene. She catches him jerking off to her underwear, and then she basically just says, hey, it's cool, like whatever, you know, makes me feel good to know that somebody still likes me and shit like that. So basically, next thing you know, long story short, the kid and Kim Basinger, they end up fucking, and it's like, it's not really like a sleazy, like, oh, like, thing. It's just, you know, for him, because he's like a virgin and shit, he's just going off slow and quiet. And she's doing it kind of just like to emotionally cope, like just to feel alive kind of thing. So this like little affair they start having, it's really interesting, you know, to watch because it's not really based on like steamy sex and fucking. It's really more about like, you know, just emotional distanceness and coldness and stuff and trying to reconnect with, I guess, feeling alive or, you know, connecting with another person. It's a really bizarre, interesting thing. And then basically the backdrop is because they start having that affair, Jeff Bridges, he starts seeing the effect that it's having on, like, the little girl. You know, unfortunately, the little girl, played by Elle Fanny, walks in and sees him fucking one day. So Jeff Bridges, he, like, really loses his shit. He's getting ready to divorce Kim Basinger. He wants to take her to fucking court and all this shit, get custody of the kid because he knows how fucked up she is and stuff. It's really interesting how it plays out because, you know, this kid, John Foster, he was a young writer. He came to do this, you know, summer assistant gig for Jeff Bridges because he really looked up to Jeff Bridges, thought he was really interesting, thought he was a real artist, and he kind of sees that Jeff Bridges is just a fucked up, just like flawed-ass person that really isn't somebody to look up to. And he also sees that 
even though Kim Basinger is like really like fucked up and emotionally damaged, he sees that she's really not a bad person. She just can't cope with, you know, everyday life anymore. And she can't really cope with being a mother to this little girl because she's like so fucked up. It's just like a real good life lesson the way they play it out. You know, it's like you got a young young guy who's coming of age, you got this marriage that's falling apart, you got a mother who doesn't really want to be a mother to her, her child, and you know, her child is suffering because her parents are so fucked up and stuff. So it's just a really interesting dynamic that really says a lot about human beings and stuff that we go through and attachments and holding on to the past and stuff. And that's like kind of the hauntingness of this movie is it really shows you how, you know, all of us are kind of like one step away from some bad shit happening and changing us forever, man. So as a movie, type of movie is trying to be, really mixing it up with some quirky humor, I cannot recommend it enough. Door on the Floor is a movie, I'm going to give it 9 out of 10. Picture and sound quality, this one being a DVD, of course it's not going to be amazing looking. You know, this really could use from a Blu-ray, even though it's like a talky film shit. There's a lot of great scenery, the Hamptons, the ocean shit, I really would like to see this on Blu-ray someday. But for now, we got to live with the DVD, and it doesn't look too bad. It just kind of looks a little washed out. You know, high def would make them colors more crisp, but what are you going to do? The sound, like I said, it's mostly a talky film and shit, but there is some good um, sound enveloping scenes when they're, at, you know, around the ocean. I mean, you get a little bit of ambience and, you know, the surround sound stuff. It does a good job. Going by DVD standards is not bad at all. i got to give it picture and sound 7 out of 10. Alright, special features, a lot of times little movies like this, they don't get shit, but I'll give them credit, man, they went out of the way on this one. There's a 25 minute making of documentary, it's actually really good, really interesting. They really go into like a lot of behind the scenes footage, where you know, they talk to the author, they talk to the actors, they show them on set, how they got along with the director, why they wanted to do this movie and stuff, it really is good, man. The director really breaks it down about what he saw in the novel how he wanted to turn it into a movie, what the differences was. I really liked it a lot. There's also a 15 minute interview with John Irving, the guy who wrote the book, and he talks about a lot about the process of, guys had a lot of his books turned into movies, uh, movies like Hotel New Hampshire, A World According to Garp. Then there's like another 25 minute thing taken from Sundance Channel that they did called Anatomy of a Scene, where it's like, if you ever seen this series on uh, Sundance Channel, they kind of like, a lot of times they follow and they break down like how they shot a certain scene, but then they also talk about, you know, do-do interviews, talking about the movie in general and shit. It was a nice little companion piece to the making of Doc. And then of course, there's a really good audio commentary with the director and like lots of other people who worked on the movie. Special features, like I said, like, there's not much more they could have put on here. And it's like, not only was there quantity, but it was almost all quality, really good special features. Considering the fact that special features will tell you everything you ever want to know about making this movie, I gotta give it 10 out of 10. So that's it for Door on the Floor. I know we do like a lot of like fucking silly ass action movies, sci-fi movies on here. And I love those movies, but every now and then it's, it's nice to pop in a, just a real good movie with real serious performances done really well. And you know, it's nice to see movies that, you know, talk about real life and shit. So that's why I had to give this one such a good review. As far as independent film goes, man, it's just, it's really up there. Jeff Bridges, man, really knocked it out of the park. You know, we see Jeff Bridges in a lot of shit nowadays. We see him doing Tron movies. We see him in Iron Man movies. But hey, man, sometimes you gotta go and you gotta watch some independent shit in order to see what these guys can really do. And Jeff Bridges, man, one of the best actors of our generation. So give this movie a look. It's definitely well worth your time. And, you know, hey, and there's nothing wrong with seeing fucking Kim Basinger get railed and railed over and over again, I gotta tell you. I don't know how old she is. She's 40s, 50s, I don't even know, but she looks damn good in this movie, so... That's another reason to watch it.